The scene starts with a shot of our main character, Ammon. We see him biking around his hometown. He's there for his summer vacation. He decides to drop by the house of his childhood friend. However, when he gets there, he sees a suspicious motorbike parked in front of the house, one that belongs to his cousin. Instead of knocking on the front door, Eamon walks around the house. Upon hearing moans coming from inside, he decides to take a peek. His eyes are bombarded with an explosive scene. Eamon's childhood friend, Ophelie, is having sex with Tony, Eamon's cousin. The scene goes on for quite some time, as the two individuals drown in pleasure. Eamon can't believe what he's seeing. After climaxing, Ophelie and Tony go to the bathroom to wash up. Meanwhile, Eamon is outside, still processing the situation. Moments later, Eamon rings the doorbell, making the lovers panic. Tony immediately gets dressed and sneaks out the back, riding his motorcycle. Ophelie takes her time before going to the front door. When she opens it, she's surprised to see Armin. She lets him in and they catch up, engaging in a lengthy conversation. Ammon doesn't beat around the bush and reveals that he saw what's happening. He asks Ophelie why she's sleeping with Tony when she is already in a relationship with Clement, also a friend of Ammon. She admits that she is still with Clement, but he is doing his duty in the Air Force, implying that he is never around. Ophelie changes the subject, asking Ammon about his time in Paris studying medicine. He admits that he doesn't like studying anymore and is taking a break for a few months. After his vacation, Ammon plans to decide whether to return to Paris or not. When the topic goes back to Ophelie's affair, she reveals that she's been cheating with Tony for around four years. She insists that her current relationship is complicated. They continue talking about Ammon's photography hobby. He jokes about Ophelie modeling for him, and she asks him about his time in Paris. The two continue their conversation as they leave the house. In the next scene, we see two young ladies hanging out at the beach. Tony and Ammon approach them to make small talk and get to know them. The one in the red bikini is Charlotte, and the other one with the black swimsuit is Celine. During this moment, we witness Tony use his charm and seduction skills on Charlotte. Unlike the shy Ammon, Tony is adept at conversing with the ladies, and he never runs out of things to say. At one point, Tony even does a little dance in front of the women, making them laugh. At the end of the conversation, Tony asks Charlotte to join him for a swim, and she agrees. Surprisingly, Ammon manages to maintain a conversation with Celine. He talks about photographing her while dancing. She doesn't believe that a photo will capture the beauty of dance movements, but Ammon begs to differ. He explains that attitude and movement can still be seen in a photograph. Moments later, Celine and Ammon spot their friends kissing in the water. They stand up to approach them before anything more vulgar happens between Tony and Charlotte. In the next scene, Ammon and Tony are showing the girls around town. They encounter their uncles, Camel, the bald one, and Aim. Camel insists that they buy a glass of alcohol for the girls first, before they proceed to their next destination. The sleazy bald uncle does not hesitate to grab Celine, bringing her to the bar. This whole situation gives off creepy vibes, since the older men are trying to hit on women in their 20s. Unfortunately, Celine smiles and is receptive to Camel's advances. After downing their drinks and finishing the conversation, the ladies and the young men finally get to leave. Tony and Ammon take the girls to their family restaurant. The girls meet Ammon's mother, who greets them politely. Tony also introduces Charlotte to his mother, and then he points to a picture on the wall of his father standing next to a movie star. Tony continues flexing on the girls by showing them around the restaurant. Eventually, they make their way to the seats outside. Tony's mother unexpectedly calls him. He gets a stern scolding for not making proper deliveries during the day. Ammon's mother also tells her son that he should have informed her that they were bringing guests to the restaurant. The two ladies left outside are then approached by a man who claims to be Tony's cousin. He flirts with the girls and invites them to join him and his friends at a table. We find out that this man's name is Joe, and he's displaying interest in Celine. He even kisses her hand during their introduction. Ammon and Tony come out just in time to stop Joe from stealing their dates, or so they thought. After exchanging pleasantries, Joe manages to convince Ammon, Tony, Charlotte, and Celine to go to the nearby club to drink and dance. Joe is taking the lead, talking to Celine. At the bar, we see that Ophelie is also there. She feels a bit awkward to see Tony bringing a new girl to the bar. However, she knows that he's likely not serious about Charlotte, so she acts nonchalantly about the situation. When Ammon goes to get some drinks, the rest go on the dance floor to have some fun. Unfortunately, Joe swoops in to dance with Celine. For the rest of the scene, we see Celine dancing happily with Joe and Tony with Charlotte. Poor Ammon can only watch on the sidelines as his date is dancing with another man. Likewise, Ophelie has a pained look in her eyes while watching Tony dance with another woman. At one point, Tony also dances with Ophelie, but he quickly returns to Charlotte when he realizes another man is chatting with her. Ophelie settles on dancing with Ammon and one of Joe's friends. Speaking of Joe, when the music stops, he takes Celine to the bar to drink and smoke with her. It seems like Celine has already forgotten that she came there with Ammon. She and Joe continue to talk and flirt with each other. After a lengthy conversation, Joe and Celine go outside. She wants to go back to the restaurant, but is unsure about its direction. 
Joe points to where the restaurant is, along with other notable establishments in town. Seconds later, the two engage in an intense makeout session. Ammon sees what's happening from inside the bar. Our poor protagonist gets cucked again. First, his childhood friend, whom he has a crush on, gets railed by his cousin. And this time, his date gets stolen by a distant cousin. Ammon can't get a break. The next scene starts with a black and white Russian movie about a soldier being pelted by laughing gas during a war. The bleak film is an accurate representation of what Ammon is feeling. After the events the other night, all of a sudden, Ammon's mother opens the curtains to let light inside his room. She tells him to get out of bed and eat some breakfast at the table. While getting ready to head out, Ammon's mother tells him to get some sunlight. She thinks that he should enjoy his vacation outdoors, instead of getting cooped up in the house. She also starts talking about some random gossip that Ammon could hardly care about. He still listens to her, just to be polite. However, at one point, his mother talks about Tony, and how she believes that he has a relationship with Offaly. Ammon points out that Offaly is dating Clement. His mother knows that, but she also believes that Offaly is cheating. Looks like Ammon's childhood friend isn't as discreet as she thinks she is. Before leaving for work, Ammon's mother tells him to take care of Celine, or she might get stolen by another guy. She doesn't know that this already happened. Later, instead of going out, Ammon stays in a dark room to develop photos, particularly ones that he took of Offaly at a barn. In the next scene, we see Ammon, his friends, and relatives at the beach frolicking in the water. They are playing a classic game where the women sit on the men's shoulders, and they push each other down. After the game, Ammon gets out of the water, and a few others follow. Offaly approaches Ammon and starts telling him about the things that are currently bothering her. According to Offaly, some of her relatives started approaching her, asking about her relationship with Clement. That relative kept insinuating that Offaly might be cheating on her boyfriend. Ammon listens carefully, and also validates his friend's feelings for being annoyed at the nosy relative. He also tells her to relax, since he believes that no one else knows the truth about Offaly's infidelity. Ammon starts joking about what Clement said before he left. According to Clement, if he caught anyone touching Offaly, he would cut their balls off. This is when Offaly opens up about her boyfriend not being the same whenever he comes home. After every deployment, Clement's mental health gets worse. Offaly starts joking about bribing Ammon to keep his mouth shut about the affair. He playfully responds that he doesn't need money, and perhaps something else would work. She doesn't think he means anything naughty, so she tells Ammon to let her know whatever he wants, and she might give it to him. Unfortunately, he is too deep in the friend zone to capitalize on this offer. The scene shifts to a conversation between Charlotte and Celine. Charlotte is venting, talking about how Tony has been distant recently. She doesn't know why the playboy of the town is being cold to her out of the blue. However, despite Tony's flaky attitude, Charlotte tries to justify it by pointing out that he must be busy helping out with the restaurant business. Oh, sweet summer child. In the next scene, Ammon and Offaly are talking while heading to her home. She is ranting about her recent interactions with Charlotte. The conversation is briefly interrupted when Offaly starts herding the goats near her home so they will go back to the barn. Her father also approaches her, greets Ammon, and gives her instructions pertaining to the goats and sheep. When all the animals are inside the barn, Offaly's father approaches her again and asks her to feed them. He also scolds her a little for coming home late in the afternoon. She goes to her room first to change, while Ammon waits outside of the house. He is lucky enough to get a glimpse of her while undressing. After changing, Offaly heads back to the barn with Ammon to feed the animals. She is still complaining about Charlotte, stating that the girl is too full of herself. Offaly believes that Tony is just messing with Charlotte, and the poor girl doesn't realize it. Throughout the conversation with Ammon, Offaly keeps clarifying that she is not jealous of Charlotte. However, the way she talks about this woman says otherwise. If she wasn't so jealous, then she wouldn't spend so much time talking about how she hates Charlotte. Ammon patiently listens to her rant as she feeds a goat. Later that night, we get a glimpse of Armin in his room, typing out his new science fiction story. In the next scene, Charlotte and Celine arrive at the restaurant looking for Tony. Tony's mother doesn't know where he is, so she asks the girls to ask people in the kitchen. The girls bump into Ammon's mother and ask her about Tony's whereabouts. All she knows is that Tony headed out early and that he said he'd go dancing in the club later that night. She also offers the ladies a meal, but they politely refuse. When the girls try to leave, they are intercepted by Kamal. The creepy uncle immediately starts hitting on the girls, and even manages to put Celine on his lap. Fortunately, Ammon's mother comes along and sees what's happening. She calls out Kamal's abhorrent behavior, and pries Celine off of him. Of course, the creepy uncle resists, causing a slight tug of war with Celine as the rope. Even when Ammon's mother is escorting the girls out of the restaurant, Kamal still follows them and tries to abduct Celine. Ammon's mother and the girls arrive at the bar next door. We see our main character is also there. Unfortunately, the sneaky Kamal manages to snag Celine when no one else is looking. To make things worse, the young girl doesn't protest. She finds the older man's actions to be hilarious. Ammon's mother tells Ammon to keep Charlotte company for the evening, since she's having a rough night. Then she notices that Celine is not there, so she runs back to the restaurant to save the girl from Kamal. 
Once again, Ammon's mother manages to get the young girl out of Camel's grasp. In the next scene, Charlotte is bawling her eyes out while walking with Ammon on the beach. She tells him about the sweet promises that Tony made, and how he broke all of them. She thought Tony was serious about their relationship. Charlotte believes that if Tony only wanted a casual hookup, then he should have told her from the start, instead of making it seem like he was serious about her. Eamon tries his best to calm Charlotte down and reassure her that it's not her fault. Without telling her what he knows about Tony, Eamon manages to make Charlotte feel a little bit better. He suggests they go and get some drinks so she can forget about her troubles. Fortunately, Charlotte stops crying and follows Eamon's lead. The next scene takes place at a bar. We see Offaly talking to her friend. They are arguing about the proper way to pronounce, I love you, in Arabic. Seconds later, Ammon and Charlotte arrive and greet the two. Offaly and the other woman continue their discussion and ask Ammon if he knows how to say it. Based on Charlotte's unamused facial expression, she seems to find the conversation pointless and boring. Later, Ammon sees his aunt Camelia arriving at the bar, so he walks up to her, and they greet each other. His uncle Fernando, Camelia's husband, is also there. Ammon calls Charlotte and introduces her to them. Camelia mistakes Charlotte for Ammon's girlfriend, but Ammon doesn't correct her and just plays along. Ammon engages in a lengthy conversation with his aunt and uncle about what they've been up to lately. None of the contents of this conversation is remotely relevant to the main plot, just like a lot of the conversations in this three-hour movie. However, one piece of dialogue stands out. Camelia mentions Tony and how much of a liar and playboy he is. Ammon immediately changes the subject, knowing that Charlotte is listening. At the end of the conversation, all four of them head inside the bar. Once there, everyone engages in more irrelevant chatter while downing some drinks. Just like before, Offaly asks Camelia how to say, I love you, in Arabic. She finally gets an answer that she's satisfied with. Seconds later, Selene arrives at the bar, along with a random woman. Overall, the scene is quite chaotic, with so many characters interacting with each other at the same time. At one point, we even see Celine playing with Ophelie's hair for no apparent reason at all. After some time, Tony arrives at the club and greets his friends and cousins. Charlotte immediately approaches him and asks to talk in private. Tony doesn't take this request seriously, so he stalls by ordering some drinks. She pulls Tony aside and asks where he has been all day. He tells her that he was occupied fixing a broken car. Charlotte is not happy with his excuse, especially because he was the one who asked her to hang out. The couple continues arguing at the corner of the bar. Tony doesn't seem to be taking Charlotte's concerns seriously. Meanwhile, Ammon confesses to his aunt that Charlotte is actually Tony's girlfriend. She gets upset and scolds him for not revealing that information earlier. However, she also believes that Tony is not fit for Charlotte, and that Ammon is more suited for her. At one point, the creepy Uncle Camel joins the party, and the first person he approaches is, of course, Celine. Going back to Charlotte and Tony, their conversation goes nowhere. The woman's words go into Tony's one ear and out the other. He insists that they dance instead of arguing and drags her to the dance floor. After some time, everyone leaves the bar and prepares to head to another establishment. Camel almost takes the driver's seat, but Camelia stops him because he is too drunk to drive. Ammon's mother tries to prevent Camel from joining the party of people younger than him. However, Ammon insists that it's okay for him to join them. After several minutes of arguing and discussion in the middle of the road, everyone finally settles down, and Armin drives off with several people packed tightly inside a car. The next scene takes place at the beach the next day. Every one of the characters we've seen so far in the film is frolicking in the water. Yes, this includes Camel and the mothers of Ammon and Tony. After that, everyone heads back to shore to feast on some pasta. While eating, Camelia and the other middle-aged women start gossiping. Their first topic is about Tony and how he's breaking Charlotte's heart. Camelia then starts gossiping about Offaly having an affair with Tony. Funny enough, Tony's mother is casually listening to this while eating. The ladies continue to talk about more topics about their personal lives. Moments later, Offaly sits down with the ladies. They act all nice towards her, as if they hadn't been talking smack about her earlier. Ammon's mother asks Offaly about her family's farm, and other mundane topics about her life. The ladies then start talking about Clement and his career choice. They didn't expect him to put his life at risk by going to dangerous places. Ammon's mother then asks Offaly if she's happy with Clement, and if she plans on marrying him. Not knowing what these women say behind her back, she tells them that she indeed plans to marry her boyfriend, if and when he decides to propose. The conversation then shifts to the concept of marriage, and the women's various stances on it. Then somehow, the topic shifts again to infidelity. As the conversation goes longer, Offaly starts feeling uncomfortable. Fortunately, Ammon arrives and takes her away from the gossip mongers. Literally one second after Offaly leaves, the ladies start badmouthing her again, calling her manipulative and evil. Ammon tells Offaly to not mind the older ladies and let them say what they want. She then changes the topic and asks Ammon about the girls he met in Paris. He indulges her request and describes his experiences with some of the models he met in the past. Offaly tries to get Ammon to talk about any spicy details about his relationship with the models, but he maintains that he has no sexual relations with any of them. 
Ophelia asks Ammon once more what she can do for him to keep silent about her affair. He responds by asking if he can take pictures of her again. Ophelia thinks this is a simple request that is too easy to grant. However, she is stunned when Ammon clarifies that he wants to take nude photos of her, since it's something that he has never tried before. Ophelia denies Ammon's request, telling him she can't do such a thing. However, he is persistent. He tries his best to explain the benefits of such photographs, like how they can magnify her beauty. He also reassures her that the photos will stay between them. Just when Ophelia is starting to reconsider the offer, Celine arrives, interrupting the conversation. Celine becomes passive-aggressive, asking what the two are talking about, and making it seem like she's jealous. At first, Ammon thinks that Celine is jealous that he is talking to another girl, but she later reveals that she might be interested in Ophelia, and not Ammon. Once again, our protagonist keeps getting cucked, only this time, it's in a more complicated way. Fortunately, all of them are laid back, and no conflict arises. Instead, they just tease each other while walking on the beach. In the next scene, we see Ophelia and her sisters milking goats at the barn. After some time, Ammon arrives at the barn and greets the sisters. He's there to take pictures of a sheep giving birth. He waits for the girls to finish their tasks, since Ophelia is going to show him where the pregnant sheep is. One of Ophelia's sisters makes small talk with Ammon. However, his replies are short and uninteresting. After Ophelia finishes her task, she tells Ammon that he has to wait for hours if he wants to witness a sheep giving birth. Fortunately, he has a lot of time to spare. After exiting the bar, Ophelia tells Ammon that her sister, the one who talked to him at the barn, is in love with him. Ophelia believes that if Ammon asks her sister to pose nude for him, she will gladly do so. Ammon smiles, but it's obvious that he's not interested in the sister. Ophelia scolds him for being cold towards her, she thinks that he should have at least flirted a bit. Moments later, Ophelia and Ammon arrive at an enclosure with lots of sheep that have blue markings on them. All of the animals there are pregnant. All Ammon has to do is sit and wait for one to give birth. They even see a sheep that just finished giving birth. The two sit down on a hay bale, and Ophelia gives an instruction to Ammon. She tells him what physical signs to look for when a sheep is about to enter labor. Before leaving him alone with the sheep, Ophelia tells Ammon that she might consider becoming his nude model if he takes good pictures. Ammon can't help but smile, even though he knows that Ophelia might be joking. He'll take what he can get. After hours of waiting, Ammon finally spots a sheep giving birth, so he takes out his camera. He takes several photos as the sheep gives birth to lambs. The sun has already set by the time he finishes. The next scene takes place in a loud club. Ammon arrives looking for Ophelia. He spots her dancing in the crowd, and Tony is beside her, introducing her to another woman. She spots Ammon and informs Tony of his presence. For a brief moment, we also see Camel, Celine, and other random side characters. Tony introduces a woman to Ammon, acting as his reliable wingman. The woman seems interested in him, and even offers to be a model for his photography projects. Our shy protagonist goes with the flow of the conversation, but he keeps stealing glances at Ophelia from afar. For several minutes in the movie, we see Ophelia letting loose on the dance floor and dancing provocatively. At one point, Camellia even joins her on an elevated platform to perform a similar dance. Later, Ammon approaches Ophelia and talks to her. He finds out from her that Tony wants to make their relationship official. Tony plans to tell Clement about it when he returns. After their short conversation, Ophelia approaches Tony at the bar. They start flirting a little, but Celine arrives to interrupt them. Still, this doesn't stop Tony from attempting to kiss Ophelia. When Celine leaves, he proposes that they have a th since it seems like Celine likes Ophelia. However, she casually dismisses the idea. Later, Ophelia and Camellia resume dancing sensually on stage. Ammon quietly watches in amusement. Fortunately, he doesn't feel awkward for long, because Celine approaches him and they dance together. Meanwhile, Ophelia whispers to Tony, telling him to get the foreign woman they talked to earlier so they can propose a th Back to Celine and Ammon, she playfully suggests that she should be his girlfriend. Before he can respond, Ophelia appears and cockblocks him. On the other side of the bar, Tony tries to convince the foreign girl to join him and Ophelia later. His words fall on deaf ears. She decides to make out with another woman instead. Once again, our protagonist is back to being a silent observer, watching everyone having a fun time. Perhaps the most painful moment for Ammon is when he sees Ophelia and Celine kissing. Looks like luck was never on his side, ever since he came back to his hometown. The next day, Ammon enters a hotel and looks for one of his models, Anastasia. Once there, he meets up with a blonde model, who is the friend of the girl he's looking for. She then takes him to her hotel room, hoping to find Anastasia, but she's not there. The two talk for a while, and this girl basically throws herself at him at one point, but he doesn't do anything. At this point, it becomes clear what the main problem with our protagonist is. He keeps ignoring women who are interested in him and keeps looking at those whom he has no chance of being with. After leaving the hotel, Ammon walks on the beach and bumps into Charlotte. He finds out that Charlotte doesn't talk with Celine anymore, because she got tired of her in Tony's presence. She reveals that she rented her own place to get away from the chaos. Charlotte then asks Ammon if he wants to join her for dinner, since she plans to cook. Ammon accepts the invitation, and both of them walk to her apartment. 
This seems like a happy ending, but given Ammon's history, it is very unlikely that something will happen between these two.